champions, I'm Amy Morgan, the feature writer for The Marriage Initiative, and I am just so delighted today to introduce you to Michael and Julie Johnson. Unlike many leaders we interview here, Michael and Julie don't minister primarily to married people. They actually work with students and young adults even before they begin dating. The Johnsons hope to cast vision for young adults to date wisely in a way that will eventually lead to lifelong life-giving marriages. They founded Future Marriage University in 2003 and have posted 450 blogs and 250 short videos of their dating advice and other hot topics like living free from porn and understanding one's sexuality. They recently released a book, Date Like You Know What You're Doing, that I have right here. Michael, Julie, thanks so much for being here. Hey, great. Thanks for having us. Yes. Oh, well, it's so fun to talk to you. Let, let's get started. How did you get interested in this whole dating space? <laughs> well, uh, actually, uh, my mom gave me a marriage book Christmas my junior year in college. Um, I was pretty certain at the moment it was the, I knew she got it out of the gift drawer. Does everybody have a gift drawer in their home in the guest bedroom? And uh, I, I, was, I wasn't even dating anybody seriously, but I got it. She wanted grandchildren. I read the book. And Julie, who had already been friends with for two and a half years at that point in time, uh, for whatever reason, something came over me when I got back to college, second semester of junior year. And I'm like, I don't want to just be your friend. About 10 years after marriage, um, we felt like we kind of more or less had something that was pretty good, you know? Our marriage. Yeah, yeah we, 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 really liked, we really liked it. We enjoyed it. And I kind of attributed that one book to kind of changing and focusing my perspective on marriage before I actually entered this serious dating relationship that resulted in engagement, that resulted in marriage to this lady. So after 10 years of marriage, it felt like God wanted me to go back and reread that book with the goal of figuring out how to trick other people and doing what my mom tricked me into doing. And what was that? And to, to prepare for a marriage in advance. Again, like you already said earlier, to, to cast that vision of marriage being bigger uh, than the gateway to guilt-free sex, which uh, sadly, without the church trying, uh, is kind of the picture that most conservative mm -hmm. Christian people have about marriage, because uh, they know they want to have sex, and the church says, well, that's only for marriage. And so like, well, I guess I guess I want to get married. And in many ways, that's kind of, I mean, I almost wonder without the sex thing, if I could have just been content to be best friends with this lady. My, my goodness, I'm getting all choked up. <laughs> if I could be best friends with this lady my whole life. Um, but that whole sex thing, I'm like, oh. So we got to get married. And so we want to sit down with even kids as young as high school. Actually, middle schoolers need to hear this, too. I just we're just not the right people, <laughs> not, not us, but to communicate to them that, yeah, think bigger, like like marriage is really bigger. along with the gateway to guilt free sex. It's a really great way of learning to die to yourself and to impact the world. I think that sounds a little more fun. <laughs> but what about that? Like that best friend idea. I mean, I, I have two unmarried uh, young adult boys and um, that idea of, you know, having that person that you're going to go through life with, that, that, that's, a, that's a good idea. That's a good concept. I mean, and it's true. Yeah. Yeah. yeah and we feel like, uh, again, the culture says you fall in love and then you see if the romance lasts long enough and then you get married. Well, and that's what I was going to say is that, that that's not what the culture shows us. Usually that best friend idea of that's what you're looking for in a spouse in the movies. You know, it's much more exciting to have the whole romance or you just saw somebody at the coffee shop and, and you know, you talk for five minutes and you just know, you know, that's a lot more exciting to show in a film and that's what we feed ourselves and so inevitably we look for that meme or um that idea so what you were going to say about the friends you instead said, yeah to, to be able to focus on the friendship first so when all that romance chemistry dies down which of course the couple in love thinks that's never going to happen mm -hmm. Get in line <laughs> yeah. with everybody else. Everybody else thought that's never going to happen. And it's not like, oh, yeah, we don't have no more romance no more. But no, I mean, the main the main meat of our relationship 
is just this great friendship where I really, really, really respect her and appreciate her. And and uh, even though I don't necessarily understand her all the time, <laughs> because she is a woman. Yeah. Um, and it's a I, mystery. And she, <laughs> <laughs> and she feels the same way towards me, I, I think. Yes, men and, are a mystery. Too. And so, yeah, the romance <laughs> is, is more like the, uh, the cherry on top than than the real well substance. and i think what's so important to realize in our culture in the past our culture was helping was set up or had the idea that would help couples to stay together mm -hmm. marriage was encouraged it was encouraged to stay in your marriage divorce was discouraged you know the being married getting married having a family being faithful to your spouse that was all part of our cultural ideas but now that that is countercultural and so um as before our our culture almost supported marriage and encouraged it now culture will do everything to tear your marriage apart so it's even more important to have that marriage based on something more than just the romantic idea because in the past as you got over that limerence that initial infatuation and what do they they always called it the honeymoon right? yeah the honeymoon stage the honeymoon stage i remember we got married and people were like oh wait till the honeymoon stage is over and i was like whoa what's gonna <laughs> happen <laughs> like we're gonna hate each other or something uh but you know that was the saying in the past that you know the honeymoon stage is gonna be over but then the culture had all these things that would help keep you going right so that if you didn't have that initial friendship hopefully you would stay together and still build that into your marriage eventually but now that's not there so if you just get into the marriage based on that whole honeymoon phase and that whole um infatuation then when that starts fading and you're in the marriage then the culture is going to be like well leave them you know don't say i was just reading a Facebook post the other day of this women's group for our county and all this advice to this woman who was discouraged in her marriage and people saying, you know, I wish I had left my marriage sooner. And then, you know, that's the kind of advice you're going to get today. So you really want to have that friendship going into it to help you. Well, and out. as you talk about the culture, I think that's kind of what really was that that impetus for you guys. And, and two, so many people did not grow up in an intact home. They don't really know what a marriage looks like or they don't know, you know, all they have is like the Hollywood vision. And so you guys talk about a lot in the book and also in your training and your your resources to, to kind of cast a vision of being prepared, making mm -hmm wiser choices in how you date to end mm -hmm. up where you want to be. Can you right. talk about that a little? Because I thought that's so, it just made, that's what I was talking to somebody just recently about how much sense it makes. Yeah. Well, and like Julie was saying earlier, when I was talking about dying to yourself and then Julie's like, well, also, you know, what, what word did you use? I think mission, um, mm -hmm. walking your mission. But I mean, yeah, those, those two things go together. I remember one time in one of our early classes, uh, which we had young adults in way back around 2004 or five ish. And uh, we were talking through about how you know complicated marriage was. And one of the young adult guys was like, oh, gee, if it's really that hard, I don't think I want to be married. To which I like, because I was a little less polished back then. I was like, <laughs> are you polished now? <laughs> <laughs> okay. I was like, well, then don't. <laughs> Don't get married until you change that mindset of like, well, it's going to be that hard. I don't want to, but really, again, that's when I thought more about that guy's comment, I thought, well, you know, marriage is particularly difficult. Um, I mean, everybody, we've had daughters who have gone to room with their oh, best friend college. <laughs> and then within like uh, six months to, uh, well, maybe more like two weeks. Anyway, after living with them, they realize, oh no, this isn't this isn't not my best friend anymore. So, um, so it's marriage, hard. yeah, it's marriage is particularly difficult. But at the end of the day, if you're going to follow Jesus, you have to die to yourself. And and uh, and I don't care if you're Armenian, and then you're going to make all the choices, all the choices to surrender until you die to yourself, or if you're you know five point Calvinist, and in that case, God's going to orchestrate everything in your life to make you die to your one way or another. You're going to do it. And, and to see marriage 
as that pattern, as that that um, crucible to see that happen in. So it's not like, oh, life is so difficult because of her. It's like, no, life's so difficult because of you, and you got to you got to change this stuff. Well, to be able to tell young adults and even high school, college students and high school students to, to help them understand that ahead of time, even if they're kind of like vaguely sort of listening, uh, they'll be listening more. <laughs> than they were than they will be when they're in premarital counseling and they have love chemicals flooding the brain and having and clear thinking. Wedding and yeah. And and the have, have gone out. And they have a relationship to defend. You know, they're like, you know, that that's the crazy thing is they'll defend their partner to the death through dating engagement until they get married. <laughs> and then it's like that we want to There's encourage 10 things wrong with you. <laughs> yeah. So we want to get all that information in before those things set in and it's hard for them to listen and all. Well, I think also what we really, you know, when Michael first started doing this, I will admit that he was really doing it on his own. We had lots of little kids. We have five children and I was busy, you know, taking care of them and we homeschooled. And so I was like, okay, that sounds nice, honey. You, you can do that. And, and two, he had, he was doing it on the side, um, not full time. And so, um, but I was kind of, when he started, I was like, how can you tell people how to date? How can you tell people to have a relationship? That seems too nebulous. Um, you can't really break that down into a five-step process or something. So I was kind of like, okay, just kind of like a fan from the side, kind of. But um, <laughs> <laughs> then the more, you know, it's so interesting kind of how the Lord, you know, of course, he knows what's happening in the world and he knows the future and how we've just seen since even 2003. So what is that 20, the last 20 years, the decline in relationships and really huge has been the decline in dating and marriage. And you can look up all the statistics about that, but it's just mind blowing what's happening. And we were hearing it as we, our kids were growing up and getting into that age range. And we're like, what's happening? Why are kids not dating? You know, are they dating when they're in high school or junior high, when you're like, it doesn't necessarily make that much sense. And then they're not dating in college and young adulthood when it is the right time to date. And so just realizing how our culture, as it has gone a different direction and not towards marriage, towards singleness on the rise and career being your number one aspiration instead of marriage, how, um, those who are believers and still want to pursue purity and want to pursue marriage is like, well, what is, how do we get there? You know, and it used to be, you didn't have to ask that question. It was just ingrained in what everybody else was doing around you. But now, no, everybody else is on Tinder or maybe they're not really on that, but they're, they're on online dating or they're hooking up or whatever. And the Christians are like, I don't want to do that, but what do I do? So um, the Friends First Dating and having the book is just trying to help come back in and be like, hey, here's some ideas. Here's a pathway that's going to lead you to the goal that you want. You're, the reason there's no pathway is because the majority of the people around you, the world, is not trying to get to the goal you're trying to get to. Christians now have a completely different goal, completely different on purity, completely different on marriage. And so... Um, we're trying to step into that space and help get back where they can see a path. And, um, and we're not trying to be dogmatic about it, trying to leave the freedom in Christ and all that. But, hey, here's some ideas and here's some wisdom. In and fact, you have some resources, right, Michael? You guys do yeah. do like a three-week class and an eight-week class. Yeah. Perfect for youth groups because we're talking to our champions here. Perfect yeah. for churches. That and and some of those are available, and you can check out all those things on your website. But then your book is so perfect for that too, because every couple chapters there's some some video tie-ins with you guys. And like I said, we've got lots and lots of uh, blogs and videos, and then there's discussion questions. So this is really an ideal resource that kind of helps present your vision of what friends first dating, what dating with the goal of, you know, a lifelong life giving marriage. And then you had, you know, some real don'ts that a lot of people could, could realize you explain some things. So let's talk about how a church, a church could use this and what's in it. Cause it's, it's just such great information. 
Awesome. First of all, I just want to say I like your book because you've got all the little tabs. In there. I know. <laughs> I'm like, hey, that's awesome. She's like, my, my, our book doesn't have any tabs. <laughs> but um, yeah, so the book is written so that it could be uh, an eight week class. Um, and uh, I mean, it's 21 chapters. Uh, they're short, brief chapters. And as you know, they're they're very it's very airy writing. It's written blog post style so that, you know, high school students, young adults are like, OK, this I can digest this. This looks like what I see online instead of like this condensed text. Um, but it is developed, you know, intentionally broken up into eight uh, parts so that at the end of each of those sections, you can go to a link on our website. The discussion questions are there. And so a person that wants to take uh, high school students or young adults or college students through the book has has a way of doing that and yet not having to come up with their own dis uh, discussion questions on their own. Even we will eventually develop a video, official video curriculum to go with it. Uh, we're, we're moving as fast as we can, <laughs> which is not very fast. But uh, as you've already pointed out, there are videos for, for each of those different sections that come from past love ed and man-to-man -man memos that have to do with the same content that's in the book. So even though God bless those children that don't wanna read, they can still come to class. They have a couple of videos to show them. And even a lot of the discussion questions are not necessarily, did you read the text sort of questions as much as they are applying the general principles yeah. or even just sharing where they're at on that particular topic. Because that's part of the problem is, is not just that we haven't delivered any kind of wisdom on healthy relationship building to students, but that, that they haven't even really thought about where they are, how they got there and where they want to go. They just, that with career, yes, the thought is encouraged there, but in relationships, wow, I never really realized that I had a new best friend every six months, <laughs> a different one. So what does that mean? And maybe I ought to think about that before I start to date to which I say, yes. <laughs> Well, I love too that you 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 go back to that old Stephen Covey. Start with the end in mind, mm -hmm. and you had just a really good principle about date to get to know. And I, I'm I'm preaching to my I'm not going to say which of my boys. <laughs> I'm not going <laughs> to. He will remain nameless. <laughs> the the boy that will remain nameless, the son. But just um, I keep saying, remember your goal. Remember the Johnson say the goal of dating <laughs> is to see if you're developing a friendship. Yeah, and that and, and that really had kind of a two way thing for for just maybe the the person who's not so much oh I want to get married, there mm -hmm. there is just kind of it's it's just a good boundary. It's like let's just start slow, just develop a friendship for those people that maybe might be at more like that ring by spring mentality that kind of helps them put the brakes on too. They yeah. like okay, we don't th this doesn't have to be the one. You can just. Well yeah, and understanding that the purpose of dating is not the goal of dating is marriage, we think humbly. Um, but uh, the purpose is growing that friendship. And when you can focus on that purpose, think about like the goal of college is to get that degree, well, hopefully getting an education in the process. Mm -hmm. But when I'm sitting there in trigonometry wondering when am I ever going to use this? that mentality of like, oh, I just want to get the degree. I just want to get the degree. I just want to get the degree. I just want to get the degree helps you not at all pass that class. In the same way, being on a first date with someone thinking, yeah. I want to get married. Yeah. I want to get married. No, 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 I'm no, trying no, to figure no. Out no. The one. Focus on just the person across the table from you behind the other cup of coffee and find out what they're interested in. And then again, we the book gives you actually 10 what we call DTP talks. Most people know about DTR talks to find the relationship and almost, whatever they're calling it. Today. Yeah. Whatever they call it. Today. We call it DTR <laughs> talks to find the relationship. And I'm like, yeah, yeah, yeah. Before you're going to define the relationship, define the person, find out who you're having coffee with and then dinner with. And then, you know, and not I, in an interview. Yeah. Just yeah, naturally. <laughs> exactly. Which as which natural again, as you can, which again, day. takes time, you know, and, uh, so, but if you're just focused on that friendship, that time and how is this friendship developing? Well, it's not. 
Well, that tells you something. How's the friendship development? Yeah, the more I the more I find out about her, the more I really like her, the more I admire her, the more I or no, the more I find out about her, the more red flags I see. Are are those just carnival flags? Mm -hmm. I, I'm not sure. <laughs> it also helps with it also helps with regrets. You know, that if you're looking at and your goal is having a friendship with this person instead of what the movies teach us as far as trying to have those super romantic sparkle dust moments, you know, that sometimes happen in real life. <laughs> we did have some amazing romantic moments bringing us together. The Lord does that. But instead of pursuing that and the focus being on that really just emotions, trying to get that emotional high for the focus to be on who is this person, um, both not only gives you more wisdom to whether you should move forward or not, but it can help if the relationship doesn't go some where you want it to go. I mean, maybe you really like them, but they don't like you and the relationship ends, then, you know, you may not hopefully wouldn't have the same regrets if you were just pursuing the romance. And I guess we're not even bringing up, but pursuing the physical aspects mm -hmm. of the relationship. Yeah. We haven't even talked on that, but you know, that's, I don't know what well, I'm going there. I'm going there. <laughs> so, but that, you know, once again, you know, when I was in high school, ugh, personal confession time, but you know, in, in my relationship, that was a huge part of what was taking up my brain space and my mind, you know, thinking about making out or the physical what? aspect of the relationship. And I'm just finding this out. Um, <laughs> yeah, not true. But anyways, you know, and then you have a lot of regrets. And Michael talks about in the book, you know, if you see this person again in the future, if you see the people that you've asked out being able to look them in the eye and know that you treated them with honor and, um, and really all of the, all like there were that many, the, the couple of people <laughs> that I dated before Michael and I, I have had interactions with them later in life. And, um, I have so had interactions with yeah. them later in life. <laughs> so, and one of them, you know, we're still friends. We, we you know, one of his, <laughs> dated one of his roommates. <laughs> so, um, you know. And we're all still friends. And that's yeah. good. And I mean, I, I love his wife. She's amazing. Mm -hmm. And he's amazing. He's mm -hmm. an amazing person. But it didn't work out between us. But I still love him as a brother in Christ. And we can get together and and hear about their lives. So you want that kind of uh, future, you know, not just finding the right person, but did you treat, how did you treat the people along the way? And the friends well, first. Well, you guys have some, some ideas for that. So, and actually you had some brilliant ideas from that. <laughs> so, can, so you said about the physical aspect. So let's talk about that. You had a great illustration of like a couple, like a traditional couple versus uh, a couple trying to date as a friend first. Yeah. And, you had this certain amount of time that they had spent together. I don't know. In three months, it was like uh, 150 hours or something. Yeah. But you showed the dichotomy of what the friends first couple was doing with their time and mm -hmm. what the other couple was doing. The frisky kittens were doing with their yeah, time. Yeah, the, the, <laughs> the frisky kittens. <laughs> Do you want to walk through that? Because again, it makes a lot of sense. Yeah. Well, uh, really, one of the main things that we promote in in the book and in all our teaching is just is simplifying your boundary system down to one boundary. Um, because really at the end of the day, if you are with somebody that you have been dating for three plus months and you really like them and they really like you, and you are even thinking in the back of your mind, you might get married. Believe it or not, God put it in our bodies and minds to want to have hands-on experience <laughs> with that person. And so what respond. I see is obviously the majority of the culture just goes ahead and gets right busy with the hands-on experience, like the frisky kittens uh, reference from the book. Um, but even the Christians, the most conservative, all wanting to please the Lord Christians will uh, discipline themselves. We, we, we tried to do this in our dating engagement, discipline ourselves to be alone together, but not, not go too far. And we'd be alone together for an hour, two hours, three hours, four hours, try not to go too far. And for some reason, Hmm. Uh, we go too far. We would go too far. Yeah. <laughs> so we're like, keep your dating life out in the open. 
instead of acting like you ought to be able to go over, and I know this is harder for young adults who are like, hey man, I got my own apartment. Yeah, I want to have older. I want to have this girl over. I'm going to fix her dinner. We're going to watch uh, Netflix and then chill, but not chill like that. Just you know, chill, but and I mean, chill like this. But the bottom line is, again, if you've been dating a while and you think this person is, it might be the one. They think the same thing. You have to reprogram your sex drive during all of that alone time, and that's when you read after they get married and i've read tons of stories of angry bitter conservative christian people who had their sexual purity in dating and engagement uh rewarded with a very disappointing sex life and they find it hard they found to be yeah disappointing. they find it hard to flip the switch where sex used to be wrong and now it's good and they can't flip it where what I see is they flip the switch in dating engagement while they were alone together for those two, three, four hours over and over and over and over again. Mm -hmm. They train their body to suppress their natural reaction to this amazing person with them that they want to be married to. And so I say, don't do that. Stay out in the open. Have that conversation in a coffee shop, in a park where people can see you, if only from a distance. And uh, enjoy getting to know them in a way you don't have to think constantly don't don't touch her there don't touch her there don't touch her there don't even think about that don't mm -hmm. think about a pink elephant don't think of what are you thinking about well and it's a it's a form of accountability right so i mean it's being out in the open is accountable and too when you say um the one single sex boundary like you're suggesting or recommending that one but they it leaves room to come up with other things if you feel convicted or the Lord is saying that you need this or that. Yeah. But um, that's the main thing that can keep you from so much. Yeah. I just thought that was so brilliant. And, and especially, you know, for that younger audience that really is just trying to, you know, they want to please God. I mean, this is definitely for somebody who, it, you know, it wants, but it kind of, you kind of, the purity culture thing has kind of gotten a bad rap yeah. because of some of the things, and nobody talks about it in the church. So, mm -hmm. amen. To you just know. be, be do, dating in the open, being with groups, doing, doing things in, in a way that you don't have that crazy temptation. I just, Great idea. Okay. <laughs> yeah. And it doesn't mean to like when we teach that in class and they're like, we can never be alone. It's, um, you know, Michael talks about you can still go to a coffee shop and have a private conversation at a coffee shop or even at your home. You know, the family is home and your special someone is visiting or whatever. But you know that people are coming and going around the house. You're not in a bedroom with the door closed. You know, right. Yes. Right. Yes. So you're in, a, in my day. We weren't allowed to do that. <laughs> that yeah. was like right. <laughs> right. You weren't, but you know, and two, I think just doing that and the, the mindset that you get into when you're thinking that it takes you in another place that Michael talks about in the book too, that um, you're bringing your dating life into community. You know, you're doing it with your family, with your friends, with your church or whatever. So not that I, they're always with you, <laughs> but they're aware. And it's not, and we're not saying like, a, what is it uh, in courtship? Cause I did have a sibling when I was, when I was um, a young adult, one of my siblings did do the courtship model ended up just was a random thing in his life. And uh, you know, it was very structured. Like there were all these rules. They always had to have someone with them. I remember they had to have a pillow between them when they sat on the sofa. Um, Julie and I still do that. There's a pillow <laughs> down there you can't see. And I'm we not dog, usually <laughs> once again, we don't, we don't say uh, one type of dating is better than another, but I'm just saying that one of the positive things about the courtship model is that p other people are involved, you know, that accountability always. And I think that's one of the goals of what people are looking for in a courtship model is to have other people involved. It, those you know and love, those you know and love, and those who know and love you best having a role to play. And um, so keeping it out in the open gets you into that mindset of thinking instead of when can I get alone with this person and um, do these things? Well, how can how can I really be getting to know them? How can they be getting to know my family? And how can everyone be getting to know them too? I thought that was one of the most profound 
statements in your book was that if you're, you know, you you're with the person that you you're you're feeling these feelings that you you've developed a friendship and you are, you're really thinking like in the back of your mind this could be leading to marriage. It is. It, there's actually something kind of wrong if you don't feel any of those hormonal, <laughs> yeah. physical, chemical reactions. You should, and so understand that you will. The person, especially once you're engaged, you're like totally in love with this person. Yeah. If you want to, like you said, avoid regrets. If you if you're interested in following, you know, the path to pleasing God, you know, this book really has some great advice on a way that you can do that. That will, you know, that can be done in a way that I think. That, that it, it gave hope. I mean, it to me, I thought it was really interesting and different. I actually talked about this with some people. Um, I just thought it was really a neat, a neat idea. I'm really glad. I'm really glad. Thank you. I just think this is such a valuable, your work is so valuable. This resource is so valuable. I really think Marriage Champions, um, I highly recommend you giving it a look. And um, for those of you who are picking curriculum, uh, just you can find them and as always and gosh we could just talk forever we didn't even get to limerence which is so interesting you mentioned uh -huh. it, but it's in the book and uh anyway uh just was so great to talk to you i am so sorry that we are running out of time or we ran out but yeah. it was just so great gosh julia michael it's just so great to talk to you guys thank that you great to thank be on so the program much. thank you as always marriage champions if you want to find out more about the Johnsons and Future Marriage University, you can always find us at marriageinitiative.org.